Hello, I'm Annie Curtin, and today I'm pleased to tell you about the outcomes of a study I undertook in 2018. Despite more than 25 years of emphasis on quality and safety, patient harm in hospitals continues to occur at a concerning level, with roughly one in nine hospital admissions experiencing an adverse event. This proportion roughly doubles for patients who stay overnight. And it's not as if hospitals aren't trying, there has been a major focus on quality improvement for some time now. With hospital quality teams encouraged to apply rigorous improvement science approaches to trialing and evaluating quality improvement projects, and then implementing successful solutions on a larger scale. But still we see many quality improvement proje projects failing to deliver sustainable improvements for hospitals. And why does this so often fail? Firstly, because improvement projects are not always solving the right problem. And secondly, because there is often a lack of staff buy-in for the solution. Another problem with how this approach works in practice is that hospitals rely on incident reporting and audits to highlight problem areas. Indeed, many quality improvement initiatives are set up in response to an adverse event to try to identify and address the underlying causes. Unfortunately, with this approach, each adverse incident that triggers a quality project has already, already negatively impacted on a patient. Anyway, I've always had an interest in quality improvement and through work connections, I had become aware of a novel approach to quality and safety that I thought might be worth giving a try as a way of addressing these issues. The approach is called NEAR, which stands for Map Enabled Experiential Review. It's a new approach to process improvement that uses graphical models or maps of process systems as the basis for structured conversations amongst teams of staff. The technique was developed in Victoria about eight or nine years ago to facilitate a statewide quality improvement initiative in clinical learning environments. NEAR has been shown to be engaging for frontline staff and was demonstrated to help health services improve their clinical learning environments. The reason I became interested is because quality managers in public hospitals that use this approach suggested that the same approach could be used for quality improvement in a clinical context. I was working at Epworth Hospital in Richmond back in 2017 and I applied for a small grant from the Epworth Research Institute to conduct the project, which I received. The project was then approved by the Epworth HREC and was conducted in 2018. The aim of the study was to trial the new approach in a clinical context over a 10 month period and determine firstly, whether the technique assisted frontline clinical teams to become more engaged with quality improvement. And secondly, whether using this approach led to improvements in indicators of patient harm. Participants in the project were frontline staff in two clinical areas, namely the emergency department and an inpatient oncology ward. The tool I used to facilitate the NEAR approach is called Meerkat, which is an online tool that presents business processes as interactive maps. The Meerkat tool includes maps representing the NSQHS standards, and the project used the maps for version one of the NSQHS standards three, four, five, six, and 10. Here's an example of a Meerkat map, which is called a base map. This one is for patient identification and procedure matching, which corresponds to standard five in version one of the NSQHS standards. Each color coded rectangle or node in the map represents either an input, a process, an outcome or output relevant to achieving the overall objectives of the standard. The arrowed lines show how all the components are logically related. That is which inputs are used in which processes and which outcomes and outputs are produced. Here is the oncology ward during one of the 35 minute quality sessions, which took place every Wednesday afternoon during handover time over the 10 months of the project. You can see that the Meerkat tool is projected up on the wall so that everyone can follow along during the exercise. The person driving the tool and facilitating the discussion in this session was the nurse unit manager, who learned how to use the tool in about two minutes. On this occasion, the quality manager and one of the hospital's senior managers also attended and became involved in the discussions. 
This slide summarizes how Teams use the tool. The person driving the tool clicks on a node in the map, which opens a rating panel. This provides some information about the node, in this case, a process, which team members read and discuss in the context of a specific rating question. A rating scale is provided and staff can nominate individual ratings based on their own knowledge or experience, after which the group decides on a consensus rating for the group. They are able to attach files and record comments from their discussion. If during the discussion, the group identifies a problem or issue, or even if they feel they are doing things well, but identify something that they can improve further, they can add a card for that node into their quality improvement action plan to be followed up by a nominated member of staff. Data collected over the course of the project included map node ratings and comments, which were collected in the online Meerkat application. Survey data about staff knowledge, attitudes and behaviours in relation to quality improvement. There was a baseline pre-intervention survey and then post-intervention surveys at the two and a half, five and 10 months over the course of the project. We also collected and analyzed incident data collected in RISMAN to allow us to compare the two participating units with the rest of the hospital. This table shows some of the data from the surveys at the two and a half, five and 10 month time points. And you can see that over the course of the project, a very high proportion of respondents enjoyed the team-based discussions liked the graphical approach to reviewing the standards, enjoyed the opportunity to reflect on their own clinical practice, felt comfortable expressing their own views and enjoyed hearing the views of others. They learned new information about the standards and also about hospital policies and protocols. And importantly, volunteered to assist with implementing action plan tasks. This varied between 53 and 61% over the course of the project and there was considerably higher involvement amongst those respondents than in the 12 months before the project commenced. When it came to analyzing the adverse incident data, we were aware that interpreting any changes in incident reports could potentially be complicated by two factors. Firstly, there could be increased incident reporting within the units participating in the study as a result of their increased awareness of the requirements of the standards through their mere discussions. On the other hand, there could be decreased incident reporting as a result of what is called subject expectancy effects, which means they expect to improve their performance through participating in the project. And this subconsciously impacts on their reporting of things that go wrong. While these factors are an issue for most of the standards included in the project, they weren't an issue for standard five, patient ID and procedure matching. This is because the majority of standard five incidents in the data set were found to be logged by staff who worked in centralized units, such as hospital records, pathology and radiology, not in the two participating units. As a result, the staff logging the standard five incidents were unaware of and therefore not influenced positively or negatively by the mere intervention. Reporting incidents for the whole hospital, and it turned out were the people who logged the incidents in both 2017, the year before the project, and 2018. So we felt confident in using the standard five incident data as this provided an independent and objective perspective on the impact of the mere intervention. Anyway, to cut a long story short, an interrupted time series analysis of the standard five incident data revealed a 34% statistically significant decrease in adverse incident rates of the ED and four gray compared to the rest of the hospital. And I'm very pleased to report that this study was published last April in BMJ Open Quality, in case you would be interested to read more about the project. So why does near work? To return to our earlier diagram, we think it's because instead of waiting for incidents or audits to identify where there are problems to be addressed, the MIR approach proactively engages frontline staff and their managers in regular discussions about work is done as compared to either work is imagined or work is planned. 
This ensures the issues that actually impact on frontline work are identified and also that staff develop ownership of potential solutions, thereby solving the major issues that contribute to the failure of quality projects to deliver real and sustainable improvement. Quality is everybody's business, not just the quality manager and their team, but we need tools to make this happen. This study has demonstrated that the mere approach delivers genuine value for health services, looking to change the way they approach quality and safety. In conclusion, the mere approach taps into the knowledge and experience of frontline staff, validating not only their professional expertise, but also their lived experience of working at the clinical frontline. MIR also enables a more proactive approach to quality improvement that is embedded in regular weekly activities. And finally, the MIR approach is a practical and easy to use tool that makes the ideal of continuous quality improvement a reality and translates the rhetoric of staff engagement into measurable improvements in performance that directly impact on patient outcomes. <laughs>